there's a man at work. No, not at work. Well, yes, at work, but not in an office. He's doing something that you never see. Well, maybe it's the kind of thing you see, but not on the TV or in a film. He's not a spy. Maybe it's the kind of thing you see, but in your everyday life, and you never really think about it. It's the kind of job you might see someone doing, and maybe it's an important job, and maybe even helps people, or does some kind of social good. But it's got nothing to do with your life, or with what you do, or with your family, so you never thought about this job before. Oh, it's not beneath you. I'm not calling you judgmental. Maybe this person works in a warehouse. No, not a warehouse. A factory. No, not a factory. He works at different factories. He goes round factories and he decides how they're organised. Maybe he decides where the machines go. And the machines make some kind of luxury product. Well, not a luxury. No, more like a necessity. Like food. He works in some factories that process food and he decides where the machines go. And one day, you're going somewhere, anywhere, though not a place you'd normally go to. Maybe you're delivering something, or maybe you're visiting someone, but you have to give them bad news. And you see this man. He's a man in a suit who's walking along a wall outside of one of his factories. It's not a high wall. He's not risking plummeting to his death at any moment. He's just strolling along a low barrier that separates the edge of the pavement from the edge of the car park. And he thinks no one can see him. And he thinks, fuck it, I'm going to walk along this wall like I was seven again. Or maybe eight. And he loves it. He's walking along this wall and loving it. His arms are stretched out. He's imagining himself on a high wire at a circus. Or balancing on a thin plank of wood stretched across a dangerous ravine. There's no one else around. Or maybe there's someone else, but they're just walking their dog, or they're distracted by texting a lover, so they don't notice him. But you notice him. Or maybe you don't notice him, but walk on by, when suddenly it strikes you. What's he doing? How come he gets to play on a wall? And you turn round. Or maybe you have a little struggle within yourself, a moment of indecision. Your feet keep moving forward, but your head is weighing up the possibility of going back. And eventually you decide that, yes, yes, I will go back. And you turn round. And as you turn round, the man just catches your eye. You're looking at him, and he looks at you, and he knows in that moment that he's being watched. He jumps to the floor. The game is over. Or maybe he doesn't jump. Maybe he's taken aback, shocked by your sudden attention, and falls, though he's not hurt. Well, his ankle twists a little and gives way under him so that he staggers forward, but he doesn't have to go to hospital. He just lurches forward and grabs your hand. A look between you. More of a knowing smile, really. He waits. Or not really waits, he's just uncertain how to act now that he's been found out. You too feel a bit silly. So you leap up onto the wall. Or maybe it's not so much of a leap. Maybe you're not such a superman. Maybe it's more of a clamber. And he clambers up as well, perhaps a bit more athletically, because he plays sport. And for a second, you stand next to each other. Although you don't just stand. You giggle. More than giggle, actually. You laugh. A laugh that wells up from deep within your stomach. A laugh that infects the man next to you, so that he too is howling, barely able to keep his balance. Seconds pass. Minutes. These two people who I've never met before and will never meet again stand on a wall, laughing. A figure emerges from the factory door. He wears blue overalls. No, not overalls. He's wearing a suit. A grey suit. An expensive suit. He shouts. Or maybe not shouts. Maybe he raises his voice but feigns politeness. What are you doing? Or not so aggressive. Shall we uh, look at that machine then? And your wall strutting companion nods at him, or perhaps at you. Or maybe it's a cheeky wink that he gives before hopping down and following his colleague into the factory. And you carry on along your way. On your way to deliver that parcel or give that person the piece of news they didn't want to hear. But this time, there's a renewed confidence in your step. And you feel you know what it is that you will say. Or the package, bound with brown paper and parcel tape, no longer chafes at your fingers as you carry it.